Guess he has been alive for 104 years, but he has remained frowning physically at 17 years old. Because when he was 17 years old, the Tuck family drank from a spring under a large oak tree when they were thirsty while traveling. And since then, the Tucks have been immortal, which makes them invulnerable to aging and to knives and guns. To hide the secret of immortality, the four Tucks had to move every 10 years. They would return to the small town and live together in a cabin in the woods for a while before living their separate lives sharing stories of what they had encountered over the years. However, their stability and immortality, which have lasted for nearly a century, was shattered by the intrusion of this girl. When he comes from a well-bred, wealthy family, her father bought a forest at great expense and built a village there. Her mother was devoted to raising Winnie as a lady, so she kept Winnie cooped up in the house to learn all sorts of tedious manners. In reality, Winnie was a rebellious girl with a thirst for adventure. She was tired of her boring life, and wanted to see the outside world. But Winnie's occasional misbehavior always elicited screams of horror from her mother. Her mother even offered to send her to an even harsher academy for girls. But that school was considered held by everyone else. So that day, she ran out of the mansion and into the woods in the backyard. It was her first time in the mountains. Her curiosity drove her forward into the dense forest, but she got lost when she tried to go home. Suddenly she noticed a young man drinking water. The boy had shoulder-length hair, was thin and lanky, and had sparkling eyes that made Winnie stop and stare. When Jesse turned around, and was surprised to see a young girl standing in front of him, he shooed her away. Winnie said she was the owner of the forest. Jesse, who lives in the forest and knows she's a foster girl, tells her to go home. Winnie said she was lost, so he was going to take her home. But Winnie suddenly turned around, and said she was thirsty and needed a drink of water. Jesse immediately became alarmed and prevented her from drinking from the spring, even pushing her away from the oak tree. Winnie thought it was a bad guy and ran away. Suddenly Jesse's brother Miles showed up, dragged Winnie onto a horse and forced her to take her back to his house. Jesse's mother, May, didn't know what to do when she saw that her son had brought a strange woman home. So she waited for her husband, Angus, to return. The Tuck family decided to keep Winnie here until she trusted them enough to return home. But Winnie doesn't know what they're up to and she's wary of them because she thinks they're bad people. May was always there to comfort her. May sees her in a girdle and says it's too depressing to breathe. The Tucks were kind to Winnie, except for the fact that they wouldn't let her go home. Winnie had grown to love this place, because she didn't have to follow the strict etiquette of the aristocracy and could eat freely. This was what Winnie had always wanted. Jesse took Winnie to see the Eiffel Tower in his mind's eye early the next morning. Winnie loved this place more and more. She ran around with Jesse every day, listening to the mountain breeze in her ears and watching the streams flow into the distance. She and Jesse played with the animals and walked freely through the forest. Jesse jumped into a pool of water and asked Winnie to join him. Unfortunately, Winnie couldn't swim, but looking at Jesse's happy face in the water, she jumped right in. Luckily Jesse lifted her up and they had a great time. At night, the two of them lit a campfire and listened to the cicadas and insects. Jesse struck a rock with a stick and made a beautiful melody. Winnie couldn't help but dance. With her long hair flying and her picturesque smile, Winnie looked like an elf who had fallen into the world. Jesse can't help but to go forward and put his arms around Winnie's waist. Winnie also wrapped his arms around Jesse's neck and danced happily. After that, they hugged each other. Jesse had a sudden urge to tell his secret for the first time in his life. Winnie kissed him for the first time. This has the appearance of a 17-year-old boy actually lived 100 and for years. He hides a huge secret is to live forever. When he was 17 years old, Jesse's family, in order to avoid the plague, came to the deep forest. Passing by a thousand-year-old oak tree, there is a spring underneath the oak tree. They were so hungry and thirsty that they drank from the spring. After that, strange things happened. Jesse fell 30 meters from the tree without a scratch. Even his family horse was safe from a hunter's bullet. Angus was bitten by a rattlesnake and survived. Tuck's family hasn't looked the same since. They were granted immortality, but they were treated like monsters and had to keep moving to hide their tracks. For a hundred years, they've kept this secret from the public. But Jesse had the urge to tell the secret this time because he met the love of his life, Winnie, and he wanted to be with her forever. So he says that the spring Winnie saw before is the fountain of youth, and that if he drinks it, he'll live forever. Then the two of them could be together forever. In the middle of Jesse's speech, Miles came back. When he heard his brother talking about the fountain, he suddenly became very angry. His brother was too young and ignorant to realize the benefits of eternal life, but he knew the pain of eternal life. Miles was once married with a child and had a happy family, but because his face remained unchanged for many years, his wife became suspicious. When he told the truth, his wife didn't believe him and thought that the family had sold their souls to the devil, so she took the children and left him. Later, Miles' two children died of illness and his wife was sent to a mental hospital. He suffered great pain, 
and traveled to the battlefields in the hope that his life would end there. But it didn't work, because the magic of the fountain made him invulnerable. When they were mistaken for witches, the villagers burned down their house, and the tucks were displaced. Watching his loved ones leave him one by one, immortality brought Miles nothing but pain. That's why he doesn't want Winnie to make impulsive decisions she'll regret, compared to his brother's maturity and stability. Jesse is just a simple boy who just wants his lover to be with him forever, and that's why he wants Winnie to drink the fountain of youth. But Winnie, who understands the pain of eternal life, hesitates. They return to the cabin together. Angus learns that Winnie knows the secret of immortality and has a conversation with her. Angus tells Winnie that without death, there is no life, and that the tucks are like lifeless stones, never able to experience a full life. Life is a sacred existence. Death is not to be feared, but eternal life without meaning. Winnie listened in thought. What they didn't know was that David, who was looking for them, was watching. David approached Winnie's father and told him his daughter had been kidnapped. He could help them find her, but only if he owned the forest. Winnie's parents had been searching for their daughter since she disappeared. So even though they didn't want to give up the forest, they agreed to do it for her. And so David set off for the mountains with a group of men. The teenager was shot and fell to the ground in pain. But the next second he stood up and the wound on his body had been healed. David, the shooter, was happy because he thought the spring water could make people live forever. But he didn't realize it could also make people invulnerable to knives and guns. Winnie also realized that she was different from Jesse. David threatens Winnie's life to get his family to tell him where the spring is. He wants to sell the spring to people who want to live forever for a huge profit. But that would destroy the natural order of things. As the family hesitates, May takes advantage of the situation and hits him in the head with a stick. Freeing Winnie, but it's not over yet. Winnie's father arrived with the police. Angus went back to his room. Miles rides off with Jesse, as if he's done this a million times before. Only this time, Mr. and Mrs. Tuck weren't so lucky, because David was dead. Despite Winnie's efforts to explain to the police that the Tucks didn't kidnap her, the Tucks were guilty of David's death. The next day, the Tucks would be hand. At night, Winnie lay in bed tossing and turning, unable to sleep. She's worried about the Tucks and Mrs. Jesse. At that moment, Jesse climbed up to her window and asked for Winnie's help. He had to save his parents. Jesse wasn't afraid of death, but he knew that Hanning wouldn't kill his parents. That would reveal the secret the Tucks have been keeping. Winnie runs all the way to the police station screaming for help, telling the sheriff that the two men are coming for her again. When the cop heard that, he grabbed his gun and walked out. He saw two men in black suits walking towards him. After the police opened fire, Jesse moved twice and chose the right position to fall down. His brother Miles, not to be outdone, opened his heart to the bullets and finally fell to the ground. But the next second, they were back on their feet. The police thought they'd seen a ghost and fled. Meanwhile, when he found the key to open the prison door and let Tuck and his wife out, Tuck and his family were ready to leave overnight. Winnie wanted to go with Jesse, but if she left, her father's hunt would never end. There's only one way out of this Winnie will drink from the spring, and Jesse will come for her when things calm down. Jesse says I love you forever and ever. As she watched her lover leave, Winnie could only cry alone in the wind. Then Winnie's grandmother died, and her strong mother curled up in her grandmother's arms like a child. It was then that Winnie seemed to have a new understanding of death. Her mother cried and wept in the manner, thinking that one day she too would lose her daughter, which made Winnie cry too. She went to the thousand-year-old oak tree and looked at a reflection in the fountain of youth. Time flies, and it is now the modern era. Jesse rode his motorcycle to Winnie's estate. If Winnie had drunk the water, then he and Winnie could be together forever. And if Winnie hadn't drunk it, he wouldn't have had to watch her grow old and die. But when Jesse came to the big oak tree, he found that the spring was long gone, and in its place was Winnie's tombstone. It turns out that Winnie, who lived to be 100 years old, chose to guard their secret in this way. Although Jesse does not know what kind of life Winnie lived after she separated from him, but this girl lived 100 years. It must be in happiness and fulfillment. Winnie's way of telling Jesse that she had lived a wonderful life, and that made Jesse feel a little bit grateful. The meaning of life is never the length of it. And in the end, she learns that death is not what is to be feared, but an unlike life.